Next, cell link. That's where exactly do you want this to appear in the final, the position number. So I click on this and the cell link is in place. Now, once you click on the drop down button over here, how many items do you want to see or lines do you want to see at a first glance? By default, it's set to eight. I can also change this to 10. Let me show you what happens now. I click OK, click aside. Now here we have 10 states at the first glance. Next, we can click here and scroll down or we can select any of those. For example, I select Ohio. Now if you notice Ohio, next to it we see 36. That's Ohio is 36th in the list. Here it is. You see count of 36 right from the first state till Ohio that means Ohio is 36 in the list so we have the position number okay so here for payment options we are getting a position number and again over here we are getting the position number now let's have some background color for this section here I'll go there and select some background maybe dark background how about a dark one or this should be fine Yep, yeah, this looks good. Now we can see that based on whatever we select here, the values will keep on changing. We have for the loan period and so on. But now we have this particular section to be done. And where did that part go where we had already had the linked cells? Well, we do have them over here as well. It's just that it was hidden. So I select these two columns and right click unhide. So the values are still here. It's just that I had hidden them. And so all you see is the controls and its impact on the table here. Now I'll copy this and paste it here. Expand this and I would clear this out so that we can prepare it from scratch. For you, this will be readily available. So not an issue with that. Now loan amount. Loan amount, we could have directly linked it over here, but as a matter of maintaining uniformity, we would just link it to this cell. That's fine. This control could have directly linked to this cell as well. That was fine, but I just don't want any control to be directly affecting this result here. Hence, we have it here. Now, similarly, we have loan period linked to this. Now here it's five years. If you don't see the word years, click control one or control exclamation on your keyboard. You come to this format cells. If you fail to reach here, click on this. Now go to custom. Here select zero and then space in double quotes type years, double quotes, close. And here you have any number that you enter, it will be followed with the word years. Now the interest rate. We know that this value is in the form of basis points and 600 basis points means 6%. If I take this value and click on 600, by default it's taking a 600. It should show as 6%. Now if I click on percentage sign, well, it's showing a 60,000. That's grossly incorrect. So I need to divide it by 10,000. And here we have 6%. Get some decimals. Now take a look. If I change this to 6.05%, 610 basis points is nothing but 6.1% and so on. For now, let's keep this at 6% for ease of calculation. Payment option. Now here's the interesting part. Payment option. It's positioned at number five, but I cannot use any of these controls to get the desired result. So hence we have it in a separate tab over here or a worksheet in this list. Again, they are arranged in exactly the same order as this. So I say index. We can also use VLOOKUP. That's absolutely fine. You can also use the offset function 
but I think index function makes my job a lot easier and convenient. So I use an index array where you are looking for. I select this range, comma. Now, which column or row number are you looking at? Which row number are you looking for? It's this, the position number, okay? Now, since we had switched between worksheets, the sheet one has cropped up over here. So even if you don't have this, that's absolutely fine because it's the same worksheet that we are working on. So you can leave it as it is or delete it. But ensure that if it is deleted, the understanding is that G9 that you're pointing to belongs to the same worksheet where you have the formula. So here sheet two, if you remove this exclamation and sheet two, it will assume that F3 to F9 belongs to this current worksheet. So ensure that you don't recklessly delete anything else. Close the bracket. And here we have annual. Now let's test it out. I click on quarterly. The position is three and it's quarterly. Bimonthly, bimonthly. So for now, let's keep it annual. Now state. Again, we'll use the same index function. Now the arrow, the array. So here we have the list of states. I select this, comma, the position number, close the bracket, hit enter. Here we have this. It's syncing because the range in which it has been selected, okay, we need to ensure that the selection range is accurate. For this drop down, we had selected the exact same range. And again, for the index function, we have used the exact same range. It would really be inconvenient and troublesome if in one selection you include the heading and in the other selection you do not include the heading. Or in case if you miss on selecting one of the, either the start cell or the end cell. Ensure you maintain the uniformity. South Carolina. I expand this. Now state charges. We can again use a VLOOKUP or still I can also use the index function. Or if you want to play safe, you can also use a VLOOKUP. Let's test out different functions that we have. Look up for South Carolina in table array. That's this table. Select this entire table, comma. Next, it asks for column index number. Well, in case if you find South Carolina, which corresponding column value do you want from the selection? Of the two columns selected, I need the second column value, comma, range lookup should be exact match, close the bracket. And here we have this, South Carolina at 0 0.5. Now let's look for an exception. New York is 1.25. Mississippi is 1%. Let's test it out. New York 1.25. Yes. And Mississippi is 1%. Perfect. Let's go back to Ohio or Hawaii. That sounds interesting. And Hawaii has really low rates. Now charges on loan, that's loan amount multiplied by the state charges. So that's the charges on loans. Okay, it's just $75. Now number of installments per year, in order to determine this, how many years am I? Now in order to determine the number of installments per year, I can again, either use a VLOOKUP or index function. So let's try with index. Now that's pretty easy for me. Select the array. Ensure that this is in same order as you had it. Ensure that you have it in the same order as it, you had it with the radio buttons, option buttons. So I select this array. Now next it's asking for row number. I come back to sheet one and this is the row number. The sheet one I can get rid of, it's optional. Or I can leave it as it is, that's still fine. Close bracket and here we have so if you're making an annual payment every year, you will only pay once in a year. But if you're making a quarterly payment, that means four times in a year. And if you're making a bi-monthly, 
it's six times in a year that's once in two years once in two months that's the one for now let's keep it to annual so it's five year loan paid once in a year so that means five installments to be paid so total installments will be number of years multiplied by number of installments per year so you have your total installments now if i'm paying monthly every year i'll be making 12 payments and over the span of five years i'll be making 12 multiplied by five that's 60 payments or 60 installments that i would be paying now although the interest rate is an annualized interest rate okay here let's change this to annual interest rate but if i'm making payments between each installment but if i'm making payments in installments then the interest rate would be segregated or divided by the number of installments so interest rate divided by number of installments per year that's as good as since it's a monthly payment that's 0.5 percent per month so for every amount outstanding you'll be paying 0.5 percent every month as an interest so this becomes your effective interest rate for each installment and total installments you'll be paying 60. based on this we can calculate our equated installment and that is we have an interesting function a finance based function called pmt it calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate so here we are assuming this interest rate to be constant throughout the term of your loan and not floating rate and constant period that means you are also paying at fixed intervals okay so rate this is the effective rate that we'll select now n per when you say n per it's the number of periods here in this case we can say it's the number of installments so that's it when you say 60 installments it's also 60 period 60 period comma pv pv is for present value so that's the loan amount that you have in hand and you'll be repaying over the span of 60 months or 60 installments and well the rest of the parameters in square brackets are optional fv although we leave it blank you can also keep it to zero because you definitely want your future value that's fv future value the amount due to the bank to be zero by the end of the final installment that you pay you don't owe anything to the bank by then so you can leave it blank or just close the bracket or put a zero that's absolutely fine i hit enter and i see a negative value here that's because it's indicated as a cash outflow this is an inflow because you are receiving loan amount and every time you're paying out installments this is the thing now what about the first bill amount well the first bill amount would be here we have this negative value okay i would like to appear, uh, show this as a positive value so i have a function called abs that's to return the absolute value of a number without its sign whether it's a positive number or a negative number it doesn't matter if i put it under abs function it just returns the number without the sign and i'll take this value plus i have some charges on loan and that's what my first bill amount will be 654.98 dollars well in case if you want to test it let's try this out loan period let's say it's not for five years but it's just for three years and i will be paying on quarterly basis so that's four installments every year for three years that means total of 12 installments and for each installment the interest rate would be at 1.5 now if i use this within the pmt function the equated installment is this you'll be paying 2750.4 dollars every month every quarter this is a quarterly payment and the first bill amount is this that's because it also includes the charges on loans well in case if it's not hawaii let's write out with missouri it's 0.5 percent 
Let's try it. New York. It's 1.25% on the loan amount. That's $375. That's a total of $3,125 as your first bill amount. And next installment onwards, you'll be paying this flat amount. Well, that's the best way how you can make the best use of these form controls here. So, well, if you get a good hang of this, these many tools that we have here, it would be quite convenient. Most of these form controls are best used with in case if you need any form of data entry form or something then yes you can use them with macros well in case if you're looking for any form of data entry form without using macros then yes we do have one option here let's take an example i want to load in some data as in let's say name age and which state they belong to now I want to have a simple list over here with the list of names, their age and the state they belong to. And I want to have a simple data entry form. Now under the developer tab, well, we don't see a form option over here except for the form controls. But yes, we can enable an interesting tool from Excel. Click on file menu, go to more, go to options. Now here we have quick access toolbar and under this popular commands, click all commands. Once you click on all commands, there is a whole bunch of lists over here and we are looking for something called as form. So scroll down, everything is arranged alphabetically. So till we come to the list that starts with F as in forms. Here we have, let's scroll down further. And here we have form, click on add, click OK. And here we have this, click on form. Microsoft Excel cannot determine which row in your list or selection contains column label which are required. So click OK. And here it is. Now let's say I type the first one as John Smith, a very common name. Let's say age of 30 and state as Washington. We have this. Click on new and here it is. Now next we say Alice, Alice Springs. Age of let's say 28 state she's come from New York. Click on add. And so we can see some more records added over here. Well, in case if you want to run through any of the list over here, we can just click on find previous and find previous again, find next. And then maybe the age of John Smith is incorrect. Maybe that was supposed to be 26. Click on that and click on find next. Now here, let's say it was not supposed to be 30, but 26. I want to edit this and it's not from Washington. Let's say it's from Texas. Once you're done with this, the only button that makes sense to click on over here is new. But when you click on new, this time it's not adding a new record, but rather it's updating an existing one because we have already pulled up an existing record. So just click on new. And here we have this updated. Click close. You can have as many fields that you need, but let me tell you, it's a simple data entry form here. No fancy buttons or anything, but yes, all at the back your back end call. Well, in case if you want to delete the record, so you can just click on delete. Displayed record will be permanently deleted. That means there is no undo option. Click OK, and John Smith is gone.